Some of our accolades. We are the recipients of a 1997 restraining order. <laughs> keeping us 100 feet at all times from America's greatest actor, Mr. Alan Alda. <laughs> Alan Alda, double A, beep, beep, get off my property. <laughs> How to describe. You know when you get to the bottom of a tub of hummus and you can't fit your carrot in there, so you gotta use your fingies to scoop it out? Bam, that's us, baby! How can I describe the kind of vibe we give off? You know when you walk by a travel agency and you're like, what? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We are the yerba mate tea bag staining the countertop of American pop culture. But who are we as individuals? Well, do you mind if I get into my big story? You're, I sincerely see the stage you, sir. And I accept the stage from you, sir. Of course, you all know me. I'm George St. Giglin. Hush. I'm the type of man you would catch at a party going through the coats. I am neither Jewish nor a woman, but like many men over the age of 70, I have reached that point in life where I am somehow both. <laughs> I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, and I am responsible for reintroducing the polio virus to my school district. <laughs> As a novelist, I was once compared to Philip Roth. I was also once compared to a police sketch of the Central Park Flasher. <laughs> And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I've been married three times. Unlucky and lovely, like the joke. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> All three of my wives died in the same way on the same staircase. <laughs> Each death learning from and improving upon the death before it. And a fun fact for this evening's performance, I am on competing medications. <laughs> Well, Trent, I'm sure I'm Gil Faison. I am a Tony Award viewing actor. <laughs> and whether I live in your building or not, I am somehow on your co-op board. <laughs> I look like if Steven Spielberg hadn't made any money. <laughs> Over the years, I've had a real back and forth, a tentative of sorts with fellow actor Richard Dreyfus, you know. He, of course, got the lead in Jaws, and I have locked jaw from all the cocaine I've done. <laughs> I'm also an unlicensed doula. <laughs> but I've made the most of my living as a voiceover artist. Yes, I was very nearly the official voice of CBS. Yes, he was. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt you, but you did such a beautiful audition for CBS. Would you do for them tonight your CBS oh, audition? I don't know if the audience wants to. <laughs> I was gonna do it regardless, you know. <laughs> this was my audition for CBS, all right. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Trump, I'm sure this is Gil Faison, represented by Dan Buckwald and Associates, uh, reading for the role of CBS. This is CBS, baby! And flirty, but am I nuts? Did you do like a second alternate no. take? Yeah, it, yeah, right. You did, did. Right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, as an actor, you gotta give options. Okay, this is one of the main things that I teach in my acting seminar, which is called improvisation for non-listeners. It's a five-hour seminar, and you get a chicken lunch. Yeah, it's a buffalo chicken wrap. It's so cold. It's 90% romaine lettuce. It's a cold wrap, a warm Sierra mist. Yeah. It's on a Saturday. Yeah. It's $900. Yeah, it, is. it really is. It really is. OK. This was take two. Uh, Gil Paisan, Charmed, I'm sure, formerly represented by Dan Buckwald and Associates, reading for the role of CBS. CBS? All right. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And let me say something. I am like Raven Simone level upset oh. that you did not get that job. George, that is so Raven of you to say. Yeah. Yeah. It 
It's not Raven, it's true. You, Gil Faison, how many times have I told you? You were the strongest actor in New York. Oh, this guy, this guy's my rock. You know, he was the one who broke the news to me that I wasn't gonna get the CBS job. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And you know what? He wouldn't let me sulk for one single second. Nay, nay, nay. He made me get right back on the horse. We started doing heroin that afternoon. <laughs> and we'd shoot it between our toes to keep our arms clear for racquetball. Yeah. And then what did he do? He gave me the greatest gift that a writer can give an actor. He wrote a play for me to star in. Which brings us to tonight. You see, over the years, I've written several plays for Gil and I to perform in. No, George, do you remember the first? The first play we ever did? Yes. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. The first play we ever yes. did? Yes. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. <laughs> it was inspired by and directly stolen from uh, Sim Shepard's classic, True West. Yeah, but ours was called True Upper West. <laughs> that was the big M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end. Is at the end, you'd widen out, which is hard to do in a play, but you'd widen out. And the whole time it had been the Upper West Side, and there's like a Judaica store that's always closed. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Well, that's a sewer pop-up guy. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, a guy pops out of a sewer, no thanks, back down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, famously in the revival of True West, you can see Riley and... I'm sorry. And, and Phil Cy Hoffman. Oh. I'm sorry. I, sorry. It's hard because we get choked up on cue at the same point every show. <laughs> we just really wanted to make Philip Seymour Hoffman's death about us, you know? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it behooves you when a famous person dies, blame the year and make it about you. 